بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد Today is the 12th day after Ramadan the 12th day in Ramadan so we're almost to the halfway point we have to continuously evaluate ourselves and re-evaluate ourselves in terms of our niyat and our ibadat and our efforts and consistently and continually make tawbah to Allah for our mistakes, our indiscretions and the attempt to try to get the most out of this blessed month of Ramadan. So as it has been the custom after Salat al-Asr, we usually have the class. So now that most of the elders have left as we don't want to preoccupy them with this issue, they are the Salafi Shabab before the advice that we gave was specifically to brother Abu Khadija Hadanullah wa iyahu wa ghafarullah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-jami' that advice was to the brother and unfortunately tamarrada became a renegade and he didn't take heed of the advice but as Allah ta'ala made perfectly clear in the Quran concerning the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions وَمَا عَلَى الرَّسُولِ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغِ It's only the responsibility of the prophets, the messengers, to relay the message. It's not your job, it's not your responsibility to force people to take your nasiha or to take your advice. So today's advice is geared towards and directed towards the Shabab of the Adawat al Salafiyah, because they are of different complexions and of different categories. There are those people who want to be Salafi, alhamdulillah, and they're confused because this one is fighting that one, and those are fighting the other ones, and they're saying this, and the other ones are saying that. So, as a result of that, the Shabab are confused. Those people. I advise you with what the major scholars advised us with ever since we've embraced this da'wah, ever since we've come into the deen of Allah, but specifically in this fitna that you see with Salafi people, if you don't want to be confused, then don't get involved. Don't listen. Don't give your opinion. Turn to, to beneficial knowledge. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, inna min husni islam in mar, tarkuhu ma la ya'nihi. From a person's good Islam is for him to leave alone and to abandon which, which, that which does not concern him. So our major ulama, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al Abad, a Sheikh Salih al Fawzan, the major scholars like a Sheikh al Luhaydan, all of them, from the beginning of this fitna until today, they never made any contradictions. They never said one thing about someone and then they came back and they changed what they said. Their kalam and the advice has been consistent. And that's why I encourage all of you to look to the major scholars first and foremost. And the advice has consistently been that we should involve ourselves with beneficial knowledge. Beneficial knowledge. That's for the confused one who he's sincere but he doesn't know because he's brand new in the Dawah and he just doesn't have the background information to discern where does the truth lie. And then there is the Shabab or the Shab, the youngster who is confused, but he thinks he knows. He's confused. You can see his confusion in what he writes, in his blogs, and what he writes, in his comments on the YouTube, and how he talks, and what he says, and the way he exists. He may have all kinds of drama and issues in his personal life, mental problems, mental issues, so many issues. And he's strong and wrong about testing people and being nasty in his kalam, in his language, and he's being rough and he's being tough. This guy is confused. He thinks that the haq is batil and the batil is the haq and that the sunnah is innovation and innovation is the sunnah. What he understands a Salafiyah to be is nothing but 
innovation and his beer. So for that individual, again, refer back to the major scholars, the major scholars, and the advice of the major scholars was and is and has always been get beneficial knowledge. Learn the book of Allah, learn the 40 hadith of Al-Imam al nawawi learn how to be a diligent and a respectful son or daughter, stop being strong and stop being opinionated because ignorance is prevalent. And where did you learn? And who did you learn from? So this advice, Khwani, is for all of the Shabbat. And it's also for the Salafi person who has been Salafi for 10, 15 years, from our brothers and sisters who know the beauty of the brotherhood and the fraternity that Salafis enjoyed when we first became Salafis in this country and in America. But when this wave of fitna that some of these younger, unqualified, incompetent brothers came and introduced as a Salafia before this time, we knew that it was Izza and Sharaf and connecting yourself to the Dawah to Salafia and being a person who wants to take the Dalil. Back then, that's how we were. We used to find it very difficult to understand and to comprehend the understanding of Islam that the Muta'asibin people had. Whether the Muta'asib person was Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi'i, Hanbali, or whether he was from the Ikhwan al Muslimin, from Jamaat al Tabligh, a Sufi, whatever his issue was, we used to find it amazing that we would tell them it's about the Dalil and the proofs and so forth and so on, and those people couldn't appreciate and respect that. That's how it was back then. Now, unfortunately, with the new wave and a new understanding of this Salafiyah Jadida that these people have introduced, where no one is Salafi if they don't agree with them, then this is a Salafiyah of blind following, the Salafiyah of the Taqdis, of the Ashkhas, the Sheikh, the Sheikh said, the Sheikh, the Sheikh said. So I want to make a few points concerning this corrupt minhaj of these brothers that has reached the four corners of the world. Muslims in Iraq have been affected by this. Muslims, Salafis in Palestine, affected by this. America, UK, and Europe, France, Algeria, Morocco, wherever you go, this problem has reached Russia, Lithuania. There are a group of brothers who are on this Salafi and this understanding of those brothers of SP and those who understand the way they understand those youngsters and they just bring corruption, fitna. That doesn't mean that everything that those brothers do is wrong, nor does it mean that I'm taking them outside of a Salafia. But I'm going to tell you, brothers, that they have a lot of contradictions. Their minhaj is a minhaj of contradictions, of double standards. And it seems to be two things are playing a role here. Either lack of sincerity, and Allah knows best as to the niya of people. I'm not delving into that. But you can tell from the way a person acts that there's a lack of sincerity on their part. There are qara'in and dala'il, proofs of that sometimes. And the other issue is lack of knowledge. And that's consistent. Brothers haven't studied anywhere. They haven't studied properly. So a person learns or he reads something here or there, and he wants to take that knowledge, which it's OK if he spread it in the right way. As the Nabi told the people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ballighu anni wa ayah. Tell the people about me, even if it's one ayah. You learn something, spread it. Don't hoard it, don't hide it, but also don't use it to cause fitna and fasad and corruption and furqa and tafarruq and tabdi' with tafsiq and all of these things that we find these brothers are doing. So I just want to make a few points, especially in light of this being the month of Ramadan and as we mentioned, the month of Ramadan is the month of the Quran, it's the month of Siyam, it's the month of Sadaqah, and it's the month of Al-Jihad, Fi Sabilillah, it's the month where we increase our efforts in ibadah. So in a small, feeble attempt of trying to defend the Salafia, like it who like it, hate it who hate it, it's not important to me. In an attempt to do my part, 
We want to engage the minds of the people who Allah has blessed them with, okul. Which brings me to the first point. One of the worst diseases that a human being can suffer from, all of us, one of the worst diseases, is for you to be a person who, when proofs come to you, they don't make sense. You're blind to it. And Allah has mentioned many people in the Quran, this is their condition. It's one of the worst diseases that a person can have. Allah Ta'ala described people who are like that in many ayats of the Quran and many incidents. He said about the munafiqeen, summun buqmun umyun, fahum la yarji'un. The munafiqeen, they are deaf, dumb, and blind, and they will never return back to their senses or to the haqq or to the truth. Some people are like that. They don't hear you, and they don't see the proofs, and they don't comprehend. They have hearts that they don't understand with. So for an example, if a person, he is from Hizbu Tahrir, for an example, and he wants to establish the Khilafah, and you tell him, the Khilafah is important, but there are some awliyat, some things you have to do in order for the Khilafah to be established that are right in front of our noses that we have to do before the Khilafah. He'll understand that you're saying the Khilafah is no good. We don't need the Khilafah. That's not what you're saying. You're saying to him, hey, Abdullah, establish the Khilafah in your house. Allah will establish on the earth. Ya Abdullah, be a person who respects your parents, and that is how the Khilaf is going to be established. Worship Allah alone, and that's how the Khilaf is going to be established. As for a person who's fallen into innovation, he doesn't have knowledge of the religion, and he's screaming at the top of his voice, Al Khilaf, Al Khilafa, then this is just karam. Why it's called Surah Al-Baqarah. Musa hit the man, and the man sat up and told the people who killed him. It's a miracle. But they had the nerve to say, we're not going to believe in you until we see Allah. So those ayat that came to those individuals, they were blind. And Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, إِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارُ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبَ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ It is not the eyes of the people that can't see but it's the hearts of the people that can't see. When the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to Al-Kitab in Al-Medina, there were many signs that he brought that they were supposed to believe in when they saw those signs that were told to them by their prophets and messengers, informing them that the Khatam of the Anbiya and the Rasul, Sallallahu Wasallamuhu Alaihim Ajma'in, that when he comes, you have to follow him. He brought all of those signs. And yet Allah Ta'ala told us their mawqif and their position from all of those clear signs, clear signs. 
Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran about Bani Israel and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bringing them Dalil. وَلَئِنْ أَتَيْتَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ بِكُلِّ آيَةٍ مَا تَبِعُوا قِبْلَتَكَ If you brought every ayat to those people who were given the book, every ayat, they are not going to find, follow your Qibla. The fact that the Qibla was changed from Bayt al-Maqdis to Mecca, they knew about that. And Allah Ta'ala told them, you bring them all of the signs. They're not going to follow your Qibla. So the point here, Ikhwani, is you don't want to be of those people. You young brothers, all of us, we have to be people who, if the truth comes to you, no matter who it comes from, a Jew, a Kafir, the elderly, someone who's younger than you, the rich, the poor, Arab, non-Arab, no matter who brings the truth, your sheikh, whatever, you have to accept the truth and seek refuge in Allah from being of those people who when the Nabi came to Quraysh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah told us about their situation in Surah Al-Isra. Al-Isra. The Nabi came with a lot of miracles, mu'jizat and ayat. He pointed to the moon, it split. And the moon was on either side of the mountain. He did Al-Isra wal Mi'raj. And one night, a miracle. He opened his finger and water came out. He prophesied and told them about so many issues that were going to happen in their future. And it happened the way he said it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Clear proofs that he was the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa And yet Allah mentioned to us the response of Quraysh to the Nabi. Qalu lan nu'mina laka hatta tafjura lana min al-ardi yambu'a aw takuna laka jannatu min nakhilin wa inab fatufajjiru al-anhara khilalaha tafjira aw tusqit al sama كما زعمت علينا كسفا أو تأتي الله أو تأتي بالله والملائكة قبيلا أو يكون لك بيت من زخرف. They said we're never going to believe in you, Ya Muhammad, until you were able to produce for us two gardens, a garden of date palm trees and a garden of dates of 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 grapes. And between the garden, you have to make a river flow providing abundant water for both gardens. If you do that, we'll believe you. And then they said, no, we're not going to believe in you until you have the ability to bring us a Jannah, until you have the ability to bring us the sky and make the sky fall on us, like you're telling us it's going to happen. And then even if you do that, we're not going to believe in you until you have a, until you have a ladder and you go up in the sky in that ladder. We're not going to believe in you until you bring us a book down from the sky that we can read. We're not going to believe in you, Ya Muhammad, until you bring Allah and the Malaika and they are face to face with us. That was the level of their blindness. So you don't want to be like that. So I know that there are a group of people from Allah's creation, and this is the point, who no matter what you say, they're not going to understand what the point is that you're trying to make. Lack of education. Lack of sincerity. Some people are just not educated. They can't think analytically. Some people can't think for themselves. And you'll just go back and forth, wasting your time, trying to get them to understand. We're not talking to those people. We make dua for those individuals. We're talking to the person who has some intellect. And he wants to be fair and he wants to be just. So after giving that advice the other day, I was surprised to see that that night or the day after, our brother, Jazahullah Khaira, he sent out something that I want to make a very quick point about. He sent out something in which some brothers in America in 2003 called up a sheikh from Saudi Arabia from the south of the country. His name is Ahmed Al Najmi. He's died. He's died. He has died. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. I know him personally and he knows me as Abu Usama Al Dhahabi. Those brothers from America who are on the way of SP, the brothers who I advise, the brothers from Mr. Rahma in New Jersey, don't let these brothers participate in your dawah. Don't let them lead the dawah. Don't follow SP and don't follow those people who are in the company of SP. The Nabi told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I ask, where are the Muslims with this sunnah? And we're Salafi. He says, so we do akabirukum. 
Make the elders the leaders from amongst you. Mr. the Rahmah. Make the elders, the Nabi said, the leaders from amongst you. And the Nabi told him why. He said, if you make the elders your leaders, it will cause the other people to respect you. You don't have young people leading the community. They lack experience. They lack common sense. And even if they have knowledge, the lack of experience and common sense makes the people crazy. And that's one of the characteristics of the Khawarij. The Nabi said about the Khawarij, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they were Hurdathal asnan sufahal ahlam. They have small teeth and they have crazy dreams, like young people. They have small teeth. That's an ibadah. that you don't understand the dunya. My child, he thinks, I don't understand the dunya, as if I never was a part of the dunya out there acting wild. They think that you don't understand, just as you thought your father didn't understand. No, your father understands a lot of things that you don't understand. Lessons of life. The Nabi said about youngsters, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna min ashrat al-sa'a an yultamis al-ilmu ind al-asaghir. From the signs of Yomul Qiyamah is that people will look for knowledge, they will search for knowledge, they will try to take knowledge from the Asagir, from the word Sagir. The Asl of that Kalima is from Sagir. They'll take the knowledge from those who are younger. Abdullah bin Mubarak, Rahimahullah, from Ahlul Hadith, he said the meaning of Asagir in this Hadith is talking about Ahlul Bid'ah. People will take knowledge from Ahlul Bid'ah. Because a person, if he's young and he has knowledge of the sunnah and he's competent, he's not from the asaghir. But it also means from people who are young and not qualified and they're not ready yet. So I say, whether it's SP, whether it's Mr. the Rahma, whether it's Mr. the Nabawiyah, other than that, don't follow SP. Their minhaj is corrupt. The brothers who have been affected by that, their minhaj is corrupt. Not only is their minhaj corrupt, but the things that we're trying to do in terms of move our community forward, they're not on that plan. They're on some theoretical type of Islam, sitting down and complaining and criticizing. We have to try to keep our children on this deen. We have to try to stay married. We have to deal with issues concerning our health, concerning our mental wellness, so many issues, so many challenges that we have to deal with in these societies. We don't have time to embrace and import the problems, for an example, of Sheikh Fulan against Sheikh Fulan, where I'm going to make you take a position and I'm going to love or hate you based upon your position, all at the expense of moving forward in our dawah, hating each other. So I was amazed after I gave that advice to see that they put this thing out in which those brothers from America who are affected by SP, they called to Sheikh Ahmed and Najmi and said, there's a man with us in America. His name is Abu Usama. They didn't say a Dhahabi. They said Abu Usama. He calls the noble brothers, meaning them. He calls us muqallideen, people of taqlid. He calls us muqibin, people who just follow whoever they follow and they don't know why. He also calls us people who are ghulat, that we have extremisms, we have ghulu. And he also supports Abu Hassan and Ma'rabi. And again, I repeat and reiterate, without being afraid of anybody, and that's my Salafi, inshallah, it's not arrogance, but I'm gonna say what I believe. I believe again, 2012 on this day in Ramadan. I don't see that man, Abu Hassan Ma'rabi, as an innovator. And if I see him at, like that, not as an innovator, if that means that I'm supporting him, and I'm helping him to spread his in innovation that you see and understand, okay, no problem. But everybody who's in my position, like a Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al Abad, again, any and everyone who doesn't see him that way, you have to give him the same ruling, this contradiction. It, your ruling that it, it applies to me and it doesn't apply to those who are more knowledgeable than me. I don't agree with what you're saying. So, anyway, the Sheikh Ahmed, he said, according to them, and Allahu Alam, treat Abu Usama the way you would treat the innovator. And the people ran around with that and they posted that the other day. That was the first response to my nasiha to, the, to that brother and those brothers. That was their first response. I know that they're going to have some other responses. Wallahu alam. Wallahu alam. There's a lot that can be said about this issue, but I just want to 
really touch base upon one issue in a little bit of detail. I know a Sheikh Ahmed and Najmi, met him in Mecca, met him in Ta'if. I wish the brothers would have said, there's a brother, his name is Abu Usama al Dahabi, because he used to call me when we would meet al Dahabi, al Imam al Dahabi, playing around. He's no, he knows that I'm not al Imam al Dahabi. But they just left it like that. But we have to remember in this fitna between the Salafis, there's no doubt, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, he identified the Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, as one of the three shiyukh who he was advising. A Ahl Sunnah, you three sheikhs, Ahl Sunnah, be peaceful with Ahl Sunnah, Abu Hassan al Ma'rabi, and those people were with him. But the real issue that I want to bring to your attention is that happened in 2003. Anyone who had an intellect and he wasn't a part of this problem, when he sees he's going to say 2003, why are they bringing something in 2003 and it's 2012? In 2003, the brothers from SP, if we're going to play that and be like that, astaghfirullah, they used to look at in 2003 a Sheikh Fali al Harbi as being from the Kibar al Ulama. They used to say that he's from the Kibar al Ulama, that you must respect. And they didn't allow you to be against him. And they didn't allow you to disagree with him back then. And then it turned out that he changed and he started fighting with the Sheikh Rabir, and now they just threw him away. In 2003, when they made that call, a Sheikh Abu Abdurrahman Fawzi al Athari from Al Bahrain, a good student of knowledge, a student of knowledge, he has some disagreements with Sheikh Rabi, and now he's off of the Minhaj as well. But in 2003, he was one of the big Sheikhs of SP. Now they threw him away because, according to them, he changed. But the point is, how does the man Fal al Harbi? From what you identify, he's from the kibar al-ulama. Kibar al-ulama. And then suddenly he's not from the kibar anymore. Which goes to show you have to be careful in their minhaj. Every time they say, a Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabir is from the kibar al-ulama. His one is from the kibar al-ulama. You have to take that with a pinch of salt. If you don't hear other ulama saying that, who are not a part of this fitna, then be reluctant to take it. Let that be part of what protects you. Don't allow those brothers to identify who the kibar are. Let the ulama identify that because it happened before. The kibar is the one who's with them. Even if he's not from the kibar. A kibar from the kibar, just because a man is above 80 doesn't make him from the kibar, for an example. Just because he's older. No, we respect his age. It's not putting him down. And we'll come to that, inshallah ta'ala. Lastly, ikhwani, what happened in 2003 is that our sheikh, Sheikh Abu Muhammad, Rabi ibn Umair al Madkhali, Shafahullah, wa Hafidhullah, Sheikh Rabi. In 2003, in Saudi Arabia, in the Riyadh, the king during that time, the king during that time, he had a program in the Riyadh that was about what they call the Wahdatul Wataniya, the National Unity Day, in which the king invited about 30 different sheikhs, doctor, PhD holders, Islamic thinkers to come to Riyadh to start to think collectively. They wanted to figure out, they wanted to address how do we keep Saudi Arabia united. A Sheikh Rabi left Mecca, he left where he was living, and he went to that place. He went to that place. And from the people who participated in that, from the people who were invited, were people who were Rafada from Saudi Arabia. Shiite who cursed the companions. Shiite who cursed the wives of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Shiite who make takfir of Abu Bakr and Umar. From the people who participated in that program were Ismaili, the Ismailis, they're kuffar. I don't have time to go into the aqidah, but they were part of those people who the king invited. Ismailis, kuffar. From them were people who were Sufis, takfiris, ikhwanis, sururis, ikhwanis. All of them were invited. Sheikh Rabi went. Sheikh Rabi went. Now I want you to really pay attention because I know when some people hear this right now, they have their knives like this. They have their knives like this right now. I believe that a Sheikh's going, Sheikh Rabi's going, was permissible under the umbrella of Al Islam. I believe that. And that's because he didn't go to compromise 
any legislative issue in this religion. He went with support backing him up from the Kitab and the Sunnah. And for that reason, I just want to make this point because it's a contradiction. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Utaymi has a book, Majmur al-Fatawa, book, volume 28, on page number 212. I'm not going to read all of it, but I'm just going to make the mulakhas of what he said. He said, if it becomes impossible or difficult for Muslims to establish the wajibat that are connected to knowledge, getting knowledge, they can't get knowledge, or making jihad, they can't make jihad, except that they have to use people of innovation, and those innovative people, they may harm them, but by not using them, there's a bigger harm that's going to happen. He said it's permissible to go ahead and do that thing. So one of the students from amongst you, he wants to go to Egypt, Al-Azhar. He's not going to get knowledge of the Arabic language here the way he would get it in Al-Azhar. He's not going to memorize the Quran here the way he can mem memorize it in Al-Azhar, for an example. So he wants to go to Azhar. Salafi person comes and says, you can't go to Al-Azhar because they teach deviant books. They have Sufis, they have Asha'ira, they have this, they have that, and we don't sit and mix with the people of innovation. Shaykh al-Islam said, no. If that knowledge, that wajib of knowledge or whatever, jihad, whatever it is, the only way that it can be done is by using people of innovation, people who have some issues, and they're not going, their harm is not going to overwhelm you, and it's not going to be bigger than the other harm, then it's permissible. That's common sense. So Sheikh Rabi' sitting with those people, he was within his realm and within his right, and I believe his niyyah was correct.